As a Christian, I will answer a question that Richard Dawkins refused to answer. This is probably going to be the most simplest one for you to answer, but what if you're wrong? Well, what if I'm wrong? I mean, anybody could be wrong. We could all be wrong about the flying spaghetti monster and the pink unicorn and the flying teapot. Um, you happen to have been brought up, I would presume, in the Christian faith. You know what it's like not to believe in a particular faith because you're not a Muslim, you're not a Hindu. Why aren't you a Hindu? Because you happen to have been brought up in America, not in India. If you'd been brought up in, Indo in India, you'd be a Hindu. If you were brought up in, in um, Denmark in the time of the Vikings, you'd be believing in Wotan and Thor. If you were brought up in, in classical Greece, you'd be believing in, in Zeus. If you were brought up in Central Africa, you'd be believing in the great juju up the mountain. I mean, there's no particular reason to pick on the Judeo-Christian God in which by the sheerest accident you happen to have been brought up and, and ask me the question, what if I'm wrong? What if you're wrong about the great juju at the bottom of the sea? <laughs> He doesn't want to answer the question because if you really play it out, he'll see that he's absolutely wrong. Dawkins likes to think that his odds of getting to heaven are just as good as you or I, but he's absolutely wrong. He likes to point out the fact that if you weren't lucky enough to be born into a country with the proper religious teaching, then you're just doomed. But he must conveniently forget about people that convert in these nations all the time. Also, he conveniently forgets to point out that within those religions that disagree with Christianity, they don't always preclude Christians from salvation or the afterlife. Even Muslims will agree that a Christian can find their way to their Muslim heaven if their God, Allah, finds that person worthy. Judaism does not teach that Christians are prohibited from their afterlife. Neither does Buddhism or Hinduism. So the five biggest and most prominent religions on the face of this planet all hold the possibility for a Christian to share in the afterlife with them. That means our odds are pretty good that we're going to make it to the kingdom of heaven if we are a Christian. An atheist has no such comfort. Now let me offer, as a Christian, I am resolute and steadfast in my belief that Jesus is the Son of God. He alone is our Savior, and through Him and Him alone we go to heaven. And that's what's unique about Christianity. A Muslim that denounces God and accepts Allah will be denied the kingdom of heaven. A Jew that rejects Jesus will be denied. A Buddhist, a Hindu, will be denied. Jesus says there's one way to the Father, and it's through him and him alone. So, Dawkins, you sure about that? Are you really sure that your odds of making it to an afterlife are the same as mine? They're not. Not even close. Some atheists like to think they have a 50-50 chance. Well, there's either a God or not. No, no, no. It's not that simple. You have to pick the right God. So you have a lot of mathing to do to figure out what your actual percentage is. Now, a Christian, if we're wrong, but the Islam God is the right God, and I've lived a decent Christian life, there's still a good chance that I can make it to heaven. Like I said before, all the other, most of those other big religions open up the afterlife to me. You don't have that comfort or luxury. Putting statistics aside... Pascal's wager aside, we need to make sure that we have a fervent and sincere belief in Christ. Those are the people that will be saved. Those that trust him as their savior. Don't miss out. God bless. And Richard Dawkins, you won't see this, but I do pray that you will find Christ as your Lord and Savior. He's not willing that anyone perish. And I pray that you find Christ also. God bless you guys. Thanks for watching.